In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amin. Back to your program, Trajas. We are commenting on the Gospel of St. John, chapter 18. Now we are in the period of judging the Lord before the Senate of the Jew people and also before Pilate. Verse 28. Then they led Jesus from Caiaphas to the Praetorium. The Praetorium is the area of the Roman Empire in which the Pilate can stand before the people to take decisions to judge the uh, accused person. So this is like a Roman-related uh, place. That's why the Jew people cannot get into this place. It was early morning, but they themselves did not go into the praetorium, lest they should be defiled. So they were very busy with the idea of defiling. They wanted to keep their purity according to the rit rituals, so they cannot step into the praetorium or any um, pagan places like this place. But they were killing the Lord himself. Look how far the Pharisee mind and the Sadduke mind and these eccentric people can think of killing the Lord himself but keeping themselves as defiled according to the rituals. That they might eat the Passover. They were about to eat the Passover. Pilate then went out to them and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? According to the law of the Romans, he had to understand the accusation and, you know, he, can, he should investigate why these people are trying to kill this person. They answered and said to him, if he were not an evildoer, we wouldn't have delivered him up to you. How sneaky they are because this answer is not a straight answer, it's not a correct answer. He is asking about the accusations, but they are trying to, you know, uh, covered the accusation by saying, if he were not an evildoer, we wouldn't have delivered him up to you. So they are uh, as if defending themselves. They were like accused of taking an innocent man to the court. Then Pilate said to them, you take him and judge him according to your law. If you feel like you are always uh, just in your judgment, why don't you take him and just judge him according to the law because Pilate was not uh, into this problem and he did not like to share the Jew this problem because he knew that Christ was very much beloved by the people. So in order to keep his throne, he wanted to get himself out of this problem. It's not lawful for us to put anyone to death, the Jews said to him. It's not lawful for us to put anyone to death. So they plan to kill him. That's why, as if they are telling him, he deserved to be killed. He deserved to die. So put in mind, that's our judgment. He should die. But you are the Roman authority. You should take the decision. That the saying of Jesus might be fulfilled. That's exactly what the Lord had said many times that he should be delivered to the hands of the Romans and they will crucify him. Which he spoke signifying by what death he would die because with the hands of the Roman Empire he will be crucified. But with the hands of the Jew most probably he will be stoned because the Roman Empire had no stoning in their law. But they can crucify the uh, Jew people if they were accused and they had this judgment of death. Then Pilate entered the praetorium again, called Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? So he knew that the people saying, that's the king of the Jews. And a few days before that day, on the Sunday, the Palm Day, thousands of people were crying out, uh, Hosanna, that's the king of the Jew, that's the son of David, Hosanna, in the highest, so he knew this, that it was a big, big crowd saying so. Jesus answered him, are you speaking for yourself about this or did others tell you this concerning me? So 
the Lord himself started to answer in a very strong way. Because I think you know that I'm the king. Are you listening to them? Are you just following them? You want to follow what the people say? What do you exactly can see? What's your judgment? Ask your heart. So he's telling him, do you just go with the flow? You just follow people, whatever they say? Or you have to understand thoroughly the truth? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Your own nation and the chief priests have delivered you to me. What have you done? So Pilate like felt if offended. So he said, I'm not a Jew. I don't care. I never busy with this problem. So your own nation and the chief priests have delivered you to me. What have you done? So he's saying your own nation. And if you are one of them, why then they delivered you this way? Definitely you have a problem. Jesus answered, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would fight so that I shouldn't be delivered to the Jews. But now my kingdom is not from here. So as if he's saying, yes, I'm the king. But I'm not only the king of the Jew. I have a different kingdom. I'm in a different way, the king. I'm the king of the kings. I'm the king of heaven and earth. So yes, I have my kingdom, but this is not my kingdom. The nation of the Jew people are not my people, are not my kingdom. But yes, I am king. My servants would fight so that I shouldn't be delivered to the Jew. If you understand my kingdom, you will understand the angels. And the crowd of angels can attack all these people. But I gave them order not to interfere this minute. I was delivering myself to die for the people. So it's my will. That's why he's saying in that way, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would fight. So it's, if it is about the fight, if it is about the nation and being a king of these people, they will fight for me. But I'm not the king of this nation in their meaning. I'm the king of everyone because I'm God. My servants would fight so that I shouldn't be delivered to the Jews. But now my kingdom is not from here. It's not from here because it's from there. It's the kingdom of heaven. It's the core of the mission of the Lord. Christ came to tell everyone there is another kingdom. Not the kingdom of earth, but the kingdom of heaven. The future kingdom. The kingdom of God himself. Pilate therefore said to him, Are you a king then? Jesus answered, You say rightly that I am a king. For this cause I was born. And for this cause I have come into the world. Remember the story of his birth. Christ, when he was born, Herod, the old one, not the Herod at that time, because there are more than one Herod. The king Herod tried to kill the child named Jesus because he knew that that will be the king. And the kings came from the Far East, were telling him, where is the king the, that was born at that time? So the old Herod was about to kill him. And that's why the baby Jesus came to our land with his mother uh, as escaping from this. So he, Christ saying now, yes, I was born for this cause. I was born to be the king, to be the savior. The one who is saving everyone from eternal death. So yes, I'm the king. And for this cause I have come into the world. So he came to preach the kingdom of heaven and to be the king of heavenly powers and the followers on earth. So he came to die for us. He came to redeem us. He came to preach the kingdom of heaven. He came to be the king of the kingdom. And we will be, you know, members in this kingdom. That I should bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. So the Lord is saying, 
If you want to know the truth, you will understand what I'm saying. If you want to be truthful with your heart, if you want to seek the real truth, you will listen carefully to what I'm saying. You know the kingdoms of these earth fade away after some time. No king can stay for long. Look for the real kingdom and real king. That I should bear witness to the truth. The truth of the king and the truth of the kingdom. The king is God incarnated. And the kingdom is the kingdom of heaven. The eternal kingdom. The future kingdom. The afterlife kingdom. It started here. Belonging to Christ. But it has no ending. Pilate said to him, what is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again to the Jews. So he asked the question, but he had no time to listen to the answer. He was not busy listening or seeking the truth. He wanted to get himself out of this dilemma. He wanted to save his throne, his glory. Pilate was the man of the Roman Empire, and he never cared for the justice itself. Pilate said to him, what is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again to the Jews and said to them, I find no fault in him at all. But because this Roman man has some conscience, he was good in this. He said, I could find no fault in this man. Even if he declared himself as a king, that will never take him to death. But you have a custom that I should release someone to you at the Passover? Do you therefore want me to release to you the king of the Jews? So he thought that because of this custom, releasing one of the prisoners out because of the feast, so he thought that the people will definitely ask for the release of Jesus because he knew that thousands of people loved him. So he made it this way, as if saying, don't worry about the judgment and about the court. Let us take it this way. We have the custom of releasing one each Passover. Why don't you think of Jesus, the king? You have a custom that I should release someone to you at the Passover. Do you therefore want me to release to you the king of the Jews? And that question was very much important because... Uh, For the history's sake, it should be uh, revealed that the Jews asked clearly for the death of the Lord. And they wanted Jesus to be killed. And the Roman just executed the decision of the Jews. And both parties were not fair, were not just. Then they all cried again, saying, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. Barabbas was a very bad man, well known by his wickedness. But still, the people pushed by the heads of the temple asked for Barabbas to be released and refused the release of the Lord Jesus Christ. Chapter 19. So then Pilate took Jesus and scourged him. And the soldiers twisted a crown of thorns and put it on his head. And they put on him a purple rope. So they started to scourge him and also put the crown of thorns over his head. Now Christ started the journey of his suffering. You know, he came for this hour and he knew that he will suffer so much because of our salvation. And he accepted all these just because of his love to redeem us to help us get out of this eternal death and eternal punishment. And for the Roman law, it was not, you know, allowed to have two judgments, to be scourged and then to be crucified. It's not accepted in the Roman law. Just one of these two should be given to each one, even if he was sentenced to death. But because of the pushing of the Jew people and the weakness of the head of the Roman Empire in this area, Pilate, he couldn't, you know, take over and take a good decision just to say, Jesus will be scourged and that's enough for him. 
but actually he put on him all these pains. The soldiers twisted the crown of thorns and put it on his head. As you all know, the thorns were mentioned in the book of Genesis as the result of the, of the early sin of Adam and Eve. The land will give up thorns. So thorns always simplify the idea of pains and sufferings for all people, all generations. And these thorns uh, were put on the head of the Lord, wounding him. And he suffered from these wounds of these thorns on his head. They put on him also a purple robe, as if saying, yes, he is the king, but this king should be crucified. Then they said, Hail, King of the Jews, and they struck him with their hands. So they mock him, and they insult him in many ways. Pilate then went out again and said to them, Behold, I am bringing him out of, to you, that you may know that I find no fault in him. So after giving him this hard time, and, you know, coding him and putting the crown on his head, and insulting him in many ways, he just exposed him to the crowd in order to tell them, I think that's enough for this man. He had taken his judgment, uh, so just go home. So he said it this way, Behold, I'm bringing him out to you, that you may know that I find no fault in him. Although I found no fault, but still because of you, I gave him all these punishments. So he looked like a very weak person before the crowd and the voices of the crowd. Then Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, and Pilate said to them, Behold the man, look up to this man, that's the king of the Jews. He is very much insulted. He is taking the crown, but not the golden crown, but the crown of thorns. He is now in this robe just to tell you that's the king of you. He had been scourged to death, so I think that's enough. Therefore, when the chief priests and officers saw him, they cried out, saying, Crucify him, crucify him, because they were afraid of releasing Jesus after all this, because if Jesus was released, they cannot capture him again, and the people will get very angry against them. So they wanted to get rid of him by all means. So they started to shout, crying out, crucify him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, you take him and crucify him, for I find no fault in him. That's the third time he's repeating, I found no fault in him. But although he repeated this, he ordered his sentence of death. So actually Pilate was saying, the opposite of the truth or the justice. The Jews answered him, we have a law and according to our law he ought to die because he made himself the son of God. So they revealed that this Jesus said that I'm not only the king but I'm the son of God. And because of this Pilate went very much afraid. Glory to God. Amen.